So we know that Alexander Provekin is the mandatory for Deontay Wilder. I don't know if that fight is going to be made. I pray. I pray to the boxing gods it is made. But they're saying something about if uh, Chris Ariola gets past uh, Fred Cassie that uh, he's going to get the shot against Wilder. It's kind of funny, man, because Fred Cassie, last time I seen that dude, he was face first on the ground. Uh, he got knocked out by Mere Man Sword. Now, Fred Cassie is athletic. He is a six foot, 233 pound dude. Looks like a damn fool back in there. I seen the dude do a uh, standing backflip in the ring one time. Very athletic. Besides being knocked out face first against Mansoor, he hadn't been knocked out. He had been very inactive. Uh, I think he's been a pro, oh, man, about 12 years, but he's had about five years of inactivity in between. Uh, but he has been more active in the last few years. But uh, he's fighting Ariola, and if Ariola beats him, uh, he's going to get the shot at Wilder, supposedly. I know they're both with Heyman. You know how Heyman can pull strings. So, But Pavekin is the fight we want to see. Um, you know, I seen something on boxing scene, shots out to them, uh, that his trainers, Pavekin trainers, his people were saying that they see flaws in Deontay Wilder and everybody's has flaws. Um, and you know, they're saying that they're willing to exploit all those flaws they see in Deontay Wilder. One of the flaws I've seen in Pavekin, I know he's coming off that crushing, crushing, crushing first round KO of Mike Perez. A guy who, you know, has had some great fights. You know, had a fight with Jennings. Um, uh, what was the dude that he fought, man? What was the dude he fought that he did he uh, put in that critical condition? I forgot that dude, man. But um, even that fight, man, you know, I thought Perez looked good in that fight. But Pavekin, he's susceptible to being held. Now, I, now I know it was phone's going crazy right now man i know that uh that you know every heavyweight fighter every fighter period is susceptible to something you know what i'm saying um but pavekin is susceptible to being held so that's something he's going to have to work on he got clean clear shots against perez he didn't have nothing to worry about coming back at him in that fight because the shit only went one round so he you know he didn't get clipped or get hit or get hurt uh, he was very in shape for that fight. A lot of people saying they <laughs> smell steroids. They smell steroids around. You know, they thought he was on steroids in that fight. I heard a lot of people say it uh, about Pavekin, but there's no proof for that. I'm just going off what I've seen in the ring. He looked very in shape, man. You know, and besides the, uh, I'm going to say besides the Vladimir fight, because even in the Marco Huck fight, that was debatable. That was debatable, man. And Marco Huck was moving up from cruiserweight. That was debatable. Now, Huck is a world-class cruiserweight fighter. We know that. But that was debatable against Povekin. You know, so I, people just think Povekin's going in there and he's going to just run over Deontay Wilder. It's a heavyweight division. Either one of them two dudes start landing shots on each other. Somebody could go out in the first round. But, you know, Povekin has some flaws, too, that I've seen. You know, he can be very lazy in the ring at times. Um, he can be out hustled. He can be out worked. You know, but um, I'm curious to see if they can take advantage of these um, mistakes that they've seen Deontay Wilder make. And I'm curious if Deontay Wilder, when he fights P Pavekin, will he try to hold? Will he initiate holding into his strategy? Not holding for the hell of it. Not Bone Crusher Smith versus Mike Tyson type of holding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not that type, not excessive holding, but just, you know, hold push him back, put a jab in his face, throw a right hand. You may hold him again, uppercut to the body, another uppercut to the body, push him back, hold him. You know, that type of fighting, but not just holding for the hell of it. But it's good that Pavek and his people really want that fight, that they're not forgetting about it, that they're not trying to just sit on their Perez win and, you know, get fat and happy about it, that they really want this Deontay Wilder fight. And I hope Deontay Wilder wants it the fight as much as Pavek and I know he wants uh testing and that's fine as long as everybody's getting tested and there's no uh BS and everybody's getting tested I'm fine with it but it was just funny though like I said in my previous videos on my other channel it's just funny to listen to Deontay Water talk about uh somebody possibly being on steroids um because you know before he was champion. He was talking about fighting everybody. He never even brought up steroids about anybody. But it's like, as soon as guys get these belts and they have something to lose, then they speak more. And I understand that you have something to lose now. First, you had nothing to lose. You you wouldn't care if you had if you heard rumor that Stavern was on steroids. You would have still went in there and fought on because you wanted that title bad 
athletes, box, especially boxers, before they're champions, man, before they're making a lot of money, they, they will fight a lion. I mean, no, an actual lion if they had to. But as soon as they become champion or as soon as they become a marquee or a side, they're talking about steroids and how, what, what tests they want and this, that, and the third. And that's fine. But I'm just saying the mindset, though, is just kind of funny as a fan looking at it. Pavekin, Wilder, I hope it gets made sooner than later, man. Oh, I'm drooling at the mouth for that fight. I want to see that fight so bad. Mr. Boxing today, I'm out, y'all.